Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Drew Creel and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to restring a headless guitar. I've got my Kiesel Vader VM8 right here and we're gonna be slapping a new fresh set of strings on this bad boy. So stick around, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. everybody so normally my go-to guitar strings for a headless guitar like this an eight string headless guitar is this eight string set from Diodario it's the NYXL 9 to 80 um, they don't have a specific Kiesel model for these but they they do have uh, the Strandberg guitars apparently have a special version <clears throat> of these strings so if you're a Strandberg player you'll want to get the the Diodario NYXL but the reason why I don't like these strings is they're pretty expensive they're close to I want to say they're around twenty dollars twenty US dollars I'll I'll put the exact price um, right here but strings that you can find a lot more easily are these uh, Ernie Ball eight string slinkies it's uh, ten gauge to seventy four so not my favorite set of gauges. Um, Normally, I like the light light on top, heavy on the bottom, but I've actually had this set of strings on, on this guitar before, and they are fantastic. So I'm going to put these back on. Um, the, the gauges are a little bit uh, more even, I guess, across, so less drastic when it goes to the, the lower end. But like I said, I've used these before. It's uh, you know a great set of strings. They're, they're the budget kind of version. I want to say these are around like 12 bucks. And I've got a ton of sets of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and slap these on rather than spend, you know, 20, 22 bucks on something like this. So as far as tools go for restringing, um, I've got this nice little Baroque kit. And this is nice because it fits right into your backpack or your gig bag. And it's got all of uh, the tools that I use for restringing guitars, for just general maintenance. Um, it even has some extra stuff that I've put in here, like any of these like random truss rod adjusters. Uh, like for my Carvin guitars, they use these. So I have a couple of these in here, um, as well as standard and metric hex wrenches or Allen wrenches. I've got those in there as well. But this kit, if you buy this kit, I think it's on Amazon for right around 30 bucks. If you buy this, it's got just about everything you'll need um to restring a guitar so i'll put a link in the description below for for you guys who are looking for a nice uh restringing uh guitar maintenance kit i put like i said i put a couple extra things in mine i always have this uh phillips uh not phillips uh yeah it's a <laughs> phillips screwdriver um it's size size one for most guitar stuff, it it's the perfect one. It'll help you remove your truss rod cover, tighten down any screws. It even works on the strap buttons. Um, another thing is the peg winder, super super helpful. Um, some string cutters. This is not the original one. The original string cutters look like this. Okay, um, and then there's some polish. Usually, I like to clean the guitar up when I'm restringing the guitar. Get it all nice and clean. Um, another thing is this rag. This is not the original rag, but some type of microfiber rag, um, is going to be what you need to restring a, a guitar like this. So now we've gone over the strings and the tools. Let's get this thing going. I'm going to take this thing out of the bag here. But anyway, here's my... Uh, eight string, my Vader VM8. It uh, it's a great guitar. As you can see, it's like very dirty. Um, it uh, 
has a lot of dust underneath the strings. But first thing I'm going to do is take the strap off because that's just going to get in my way. That aside. And I'm going to take my little groove gear string muter thing down. And uh, now I'm going to get to work on this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just loosen up all of the strings over here. This is actually going to go pretty quick. Um, you guys will see how easy this is, and you may even want to consider switching to headless. If you've ever wondered how this works, um, I'm going to cover that for you right here. So you basically just loosen these up all the way. Okay, this is also the tuning machine, by the way, and I actually, I love, I love these guitars. Just, they're so comfortable. They're easy to play. Um, you don't have to worry about knocking the headstock off because there is no headstock. Um and just all around just for ease of use and comfort they're just they're just the best so um i'm gonna grab my standard <clears throat> my standard wrenches and find the right one that goes with these little locks right here i'm pretty sure it's this one oops it's actually not that one actually hang on a second there's a specific one that comes from kiesel in my bag here grab that one yeah so when you buy a Kiesel guitar, they send you all the all the wrenches. So let's grab that. And here we go. I want to say it's this one right here. I'm not sure what size it is. It looks like a 1.5 or a, a 2, size 2. That That's the one. It's possible that that, that that particular wrench is a standard standard size. So... What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to loosen up all of these. So when I restring a guitar, I do all of the same stuff at one time. So all of the headstock stuff or all of the stuff over here, I get all of this done first. And then I sort of move down the guitar. That way there's a, there's a process to it. There's a time-saving process. And <clears throat> this shouldn't take me more than, I want to say, 20 minutes to to do this but like i said sometimes you want to clean your guitar up but what i'm doing here is i'm loosening all of these up i don't want to loosen them all the way just enough to get the string out of out of the uh the unit so yeah they're almost overdid that one so these things actually come out you know one of the unfortunate things that can happen to you when you're doing this is you lose one of these little nuts here um for the lower strings, for the fatter strings, you gotta you gotta pull them pretty much all the way out to get the string in. So let's see if I can. Yeah, dude, I may have to just totally take this one out. It's not it's not very fun. All right, here we go. Yeah, I just went ahead and took that bad boy all the way out. Set that one right there. So usually when I'm restringing, it's more fun to have someone hang out with you, talk to you about stuff, talk to you about life. How are you guys doing out there? What's going on in your world? What kind of conspiracy theories are you into? That kind of stuff. That's what we would talk about if you were here. Um, okay, so taking uh, taking everything off of the top, I only had to I had to remove like the lower three. Um, string locks in there i should be able to squeak all the strings up but check this out to get a string out of this saddle here you are going to push you're actually going to twist that string here i'll do this one this one's about ready to come out these just have to be twisted a certain way for them to come out they also have to be loosened up they have to be loosened up uh to a certain degree for them to come out so there we go that one came out Loosen, loosen, loosen. And let's see if that bad boy will come out of there. There we go. All right, got those three. Okay, and then we gotta get this big boy down here. This one has to, this one seems to be frozen into that slot. There it goes, okay. And this is that big old 80 gauge. So when I'm looking at my strings, I'm noticing that 
um, there's these little indentations on them where the frets are, and that's okay for a while. I think I changed these strings probably three months ago, so I've had them on the guitar for a long time, and usually that's that's kind of my limit. Um, if you play if you play a lot more, like let's say you're putting in like two to six hours a day, you probably want to change your strings after like a month. But again, all of all of that just depends on the player. It depends on the makeup of your sweat. There's guitar players out there that can just, you know, the, the way that whatever is going on with their sweat is making the strings rusty. And you have to change strings quite a bit more often um, for, for that to compensate for that. I don't have that. My strings stay pretty fresh all the time. Plus, I like to wipe them down when I'm done playing. Just a quick wipe down. Um, but yeah, like my strings last a lot longer. Um, like I said, I've had those on my guitar for three months, so it was time to, it was time to take them off. So the next thing that I do once I get all of the strings off of the headless guitar, um, what I'm going to do is clean this thing down cause it's really gross and dirty. So that's where this wiping cloth, uh, comes in handy. Any kind of microfiber wiping cloth would be good, but they make special guitar wiping cloths. This one's really gross. I'm really sorry. I've had this one for a long time. I promise it's been through the wash. Um, and then I actually really like this Fender guitar polish. Gibson makes some polish too. Uh, this Baroque uh, music. It's it's a specific musical instrument polish that you're gonna need for uh, for your guitar. Um, this guitar has kind of a satin finish on it, um, but if you use a high gloss, this this polish is great is great for that. So I'm almost out of my polish. So what I'm going to do is take the cap off, and then just like put a little bit on the uh, the rag here. So just a little bit of that is good, and that's going to help clean the guitar. Or rub it into the rag a little bit. That's what she said. And here we go. Getting all the dust, all the grime. I'm going to do the fingerboard too. So usually like circular motion is what you want to do when you're really trying to buff something out. It's just like a car, you know. There's special like fingerboard uh, fingerboard polish. Um, I usually just use the, the guitar polish. I've used it in the past. It works. It works great for getting like stains, stains off, but you know, rubbing alcohol, a little bit of lemon oil on the fingerboard, the rubbing alcohol to clean it. And then lemon oil is a great way to uh, keep that clean. All right. So we're moving on to the next segment here. Um, I've got the guitar completely polished. It's glistening. It's beautiful. It's never looked better. Um, all the strings are off. And now what we're going to do is pop some, new strings on and I'm going to show you guys how this works. We're going to pop on these uh, Ernie Ball slinkies. So without further ado, let's let's get into it. Who says that Finn McKinty on his channel with that out of the way? Let's get into it. He's a great YouTuber. His stuff is awesome. OK, I'm just going to start. Sometimes I start with the lower strings, but I'm going to start with um, with the treble side of the guitar. So Pull that string out. Looks like that's kind of strange. There's actually two of them in here. Wow. Okay. There's two strings inside of this package. So I'm going to set one over here. Someone was feeling very generous in the in the Ernie Ball factory. So it's a fresh set of strings. I've never opened them up before. It's totally two sets in there. So what I'm going to do place this ball into there's a little holder inside there actually you need to go in here first and it goes in the holder and then you twist and the string will stay <clears throat> in that in that place so let me uh let me get that in there once you tighten it to a certain point it will it won't come out anymore that's kind of how it works that's how you put a string on but what I'm going to do is do what I was talking about earlier, where I do the same thing for every string. So one after the next, uh, all in succession. So let's do that.
All right, so I'm going to get you guys a, a different camera angle, but what I'm going to do is just start going through and popping these strings into their saddles. Um, you know, I've never restrung another headless guitar. I would love to get my hands on a Steinberger, um, or Steinberg, uh, from the eighties or early nineties. That's a, that's a different design. Um, but it's my understanding that you needed to have double ball strings. You have to have a special string for that. And the company that makes those is called Labella. And they make flat wound bass strings and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I think that's one of the main reasons why so many guitar players didn't like headless guitars is because they had to get those special strings and it just became such a hassle. So that's kind of why like many players didn't adopt them. But now like with this new uh, bridge design and the stuff that, you know, all these modern guitar companies are doing like Strandberg and Kiesel and uh, Ormsby and Skirvison and all these really cool guitar companies are doing is they've got this bridge that just accepts any old, any old string in there, you know, um, which is nice, man. It just makes the, it makes the ownership of an instrument like this so much, so much more easy. It's kind of like Tesla. You know, if you own a Tesla, you got to deal with charging up your car. And like, what if there's no chargers in your city or whatever? Uh, you know, I'm not a Tesla owner. I don't know, but, uh, it's my understanding that, uh, people can just charge them at home. Now you don't have to go to a special charging place or anything like that. They're just the, they're easy cars to, to own. So, um, so yeah, it would be cool to own one one day, but my, my fear is that like, what if the power grid shuts down, man, like, you know, and you can't get to where you need to go, you know, and, and if you have a full tank of gas in a normal combustion engine, you know, you can go like pretty close to 500 miles on one tank and I don't even think a Tesla is capable of going 500 miles um, on one charge. I think it's like somewhere around 300 miles. So that's, that's why that's my concern is like, man, I want, I want the vehicle with like the extra fuel tank that can, you know, <clears throat> help get me to where I, where I need to go. I'm actually missing a string in this set. I'm actually missing a, a 60 gauge string. So I'm going to have to, to grab one of those i think i have an extra one all right so something was weird about that set had two high e strings but it was missing a 64 gauge string um i don't think i have one so i'll have to pull it from another set that's going to be my b strings so luckily i had another one of these sets available but now i'm going to be missing a string the next time i have to change so i'm just going to pull that out of there here it is 64 Nintendo 64, just what we needed. Yeah, what I wanted to mention is that, like, not all string companies are the same, you know. Um, <clears throat> I would say that the quality control is really, really good for most string manufacturers out there. But occasionally you'll run into an issue like that where uh, something's missing. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is start uh, getting these strings through their through the locking area of the guitar. Here we go. Now I'm basically putting all of the uh, strings through the locking mechanism over here. This is uh this is what Kiesel's looks like. I'm actually gonna have to uh, loosen some of these up a little bit more to get them in there. There they go, right through there. I'm not really gonna bother locking them down just yet. I just want to get them kind of threaded through there. So, um, it is easier just to restring the guitar than it is to make a video about how to do it. So if I didn't have to operate all these cameras and press record on three different things, uh, this process a string. Okay. And then for these big daddies, drop these in here like this. I'm going to put the, uh, the Kiesel thing on here.
get that threaded into its little slot. That bad boy will be ready for ready for war. For the brutal assault that lies before us. The many death metal songs that we would play. Here we are. So we've got all the strings on the guitar. Um, all of the danglies are still on there. But uh, the guitar is cleaned up. It's got a fresh set of strings on it. Um, everything is locked down over here um, as tight as it will need to, to be. And then I've also added a little bit of tension on the, the strings down here. And what I'm going to do now is just tune this baby up, clip all of the ends off of here, um, and this baby will be ready to go, be ready to gent, ready to play. I've got my trusty Yamaha THR over here, and we're just gonna get this thing in tune. I'm gonna start with the high E string. So, so I play in standard, standard tuning. You know what, I'm actually gonna move this amp out of the way so I can, I'm gonna put it in front of me here so I can tune like this. Usually when I'm tuning up a guitar for the first time, I don't take each string all the way up to pitch. I usually take it about a half step or a whole step below pitch. And this string appears to not be locked in all the way, so I'm going to just double check and make sure that is locked in all the way. <laughs> We're getting some slippage. My mom always told me you never want slippage, boys and girls. All right, so we got all of the strings tuned up to pitch. Next thing I'm going to do is clip off all of these doodads. All right, I'm actually going to hold the guitar like this to, to do this, but I really like these type types of uh, cutters. Um, they seem to work better for me. Um, I know the one that came with the co called not cobalt, the Baroque set, the cutters look like this. Um, I don't really like these. I don't know. They work, they work fine, but I'm going to go ahead and use these. And I just cut the string pretty close to the, to the headstock. And uh, really, I put my fret muter up here so that I don't poke anyone or I don't poke myself. Uh, that's kind of why that's there. And then I also use it to tap. Tap a, tap a da fretboard um, for the fretboard tappage. All right, and uh, those bad babies are clipped, and we're all good to go. Everything looks so fresh and clean right there, and the guitar is pretty much ready to be played. What I usually do after I clip off the uh, strings is I do an another tune, so I'm going to go ahead and tune up again. Let's do that right now. So now that we've got new strings on the guitar, the last thing I'm going to do is just play on it for a little bit and make sure everything is good. I'm going to do some string bends and just have a grand old time on this new fresh set of strings. Sounds pretty awesome. All right, you guys, so that is how you restring a headless guitar. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, maybe you're thinking about getting a headless guitar. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to restring with an instrument like this. There's no winding around the headstock. Once you get the guitar in tune, it pretty much stays in tune. Um, once the strings are done stretching, that's it. The guitar will stay in tune really well. So thanks again for watching. And please subscribe, please smash the like button, share this video if you found it to be helpful for you. And have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at.